great. We are going to record this. And the whole point of this interview is a chance for me to be able to ask you some questions. So I'm just going to introduce you really quick. But I am going to be introducing Jocelyn um, based off of a conversation we just had recently where we were talking a little bit about some of where her passion comes from for sharing and living and some of where your direction comes from too. So it was very interesting to me because I really enjoy hearing different people's experiences, perspectives, how they get to where they're at right now and where that can take them. So thank you very much for agreeing to do this. I appreciate it. I'm totally out of my comfort zone, so I will apologize right now. This is not where my strength is. No, that is quite all right. You're going to do awesome. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just ask you a few questions about how you got started. Um, so let me make sure I have this on properly and I'm going to turn it on gallery view. Okay, great. Um, what got you interested in sharing Young Living with others? That was kind of one of the first things that I was curious about. So I think I first started with Young Living because my friend Amy, who you also know, Mm -hmm. was sharing with me because my need was I loved candles. I love candles and scents and sprays and plugins and anything fragrance related, always, always, always. And the problem I had is I had at the time twins and a little one that candles were dangerous. They could, you know, they like a moth to the flame. They want to put their fingers in it. Um, We were afraid about the dangers of that. Plus my son and my husband both have asthma Mm -hmm. and my husband's started with migraine headaches. And so they seem to be triggered by fragrance and scents. So Amy had said to me, you might want to look into Young Living and these essential oils. There's amazing choices that you have for any kind of scents. They're all pure essential oils. There's no yuck and chemicals and other fake fragrance in there. So that's sort of where, that was my why. My why was my family. It was their health and safety. And I didn't really want to burn my house down. Absolutely. I can totally relate to that. I had a very similar beginning, so I get that. Um, So I started to share. It was just an organic, natural sharing with other people that had the same kind of issues. They liked fragrance, but their husbands would get headaches. They liked scents, but they were worried about burning candles for their kids. They They were just worried about the overall dangers and what they were able to find on the internet with chemicals that were in these candles that they were burning, the flames, the, just the dangers of breathing that in and all these studies that were out there showing how dangerous that they were. So I started organically just saying, well, this is what I do. And I love these fragrance. I share with people that many were moms, Mm -hmm. um, but some were medical professionals that sort of got the, the dangers in that as well. Um, So it was just organic sharing with people and trying to meet needs that they had, which I had found um, Young Living met that need for me. Absolutely. I think that's awesome. Um, And then from the organic sharing, was there a point in time within that that you felt like, oh, this can be a business. Oh, I could do this more intent, like with intent. Is there something that held you back from doing that, or is there something so, that kind of moved you forward? I'm not salesy, like at all. Sure. And I, that that was really a whole the the thing that held me back, and I still don't feel like um, that's my personality at all. Um, I just feel like I'm meeting people in a need that they have, and essential oils are mm-hmm. meeting that need and can meet that need in a safe <laughs> way. Um, so I I don't know I don't know if I've met that I mean I just I feel like God is prompting me to share and they've been it's been a really natural way of doing that with other people that I love and I want to explain to them how dangerous some of the things that they're using are things they might not even know about um, I had listened to and read a book by Sarah Harnish that you had actually gifted me Megan mm-hmm. uh, called the Game Plan and in there I was completely shocked at how the Toxic Substance Control Act of 1976 grandfathered in over 62,000 chemicals. And that really frightened me. I grew up on a farm. My parents had a Christmas tree farm. My grandfather had a farm. I grew up hearing stories about all these chemicals they had used, chemicals that are now banned, chemicals that pose dangers to the wildlife and got into the water supply and just caused a lot of dangers for people. And so I started thinking, well, what about the other products that we use? What about the bright blue dish soap that I use to clean my dishes and the smell it leaves behind on my cutting board? And what about 
the topical lotions that I'm putting on my skin and all these studies that are out there because I love studies because I work in medicine. I love studies showing the safety of things or the, the pro ingredients in there that are not safe, showing all these ingredients that are in our products that are not being governed by our government, that are not protecting our family. Like nobody's watching what's going on, what we're bringing in our house except for us. So mm -hmm. we're the gatekeepers of our home. And I felt like, because I work in dermatology, I recommend lotions, I recommend creams, there's all these chemicals in there and nobody really knows what's happening to those. There are studies now showing that they're being, these ingredients are being systemically absorbed. What does that mean? So I started looking a little bit more into what I could do for my family that could be a safe option for us. Sure. And that's where I started making some things. I started making some lotions and I started making some room sprays and I started making, you know, diffusing my own sprays uh, for my house that just contained peppermint and water or lemon and orange or purification, which is a blend and witch hazel to take out yucky scents from my child's stinky shoes. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking on the back of these spray containers and seeing flammable sure. and seeing all these chemicals that I couldn't pronounce. And then if you look them up, dangers of, and look up the chemical, it showed a plethora of different things, including respiratory issues and asthma and be careful around children and don't spray in the eye. And if you do call the poison control center, if they get swallowed. So that might be more than, than you were looking into, but like, no, yeah, I think that that's really important. Yeah. And I research things before I get involved and like share with other people. And sure. it's not like Young Living has been around for a long time. One of the oldest essential oil companies, correct? Right. 1994, right? right? Yeah. And they do tons of studies and they do tons of, um, help me with the words, like, safety controls um sure. Sure the oils that we're using are really safe so right right they have a lot of quality control which i think is yeah. really important in what's happening especially with the industry becoming a little bit more mainstreamed and not as it's right. you know there's so many more companies kind of popping up on a weekly basis that have essential oils now um, right and i do think that it's important to really go with a company that has done those tried and true tests and really has the roots literally, which I think is something that I found really important too, just that they do that farming and that they're really involved in that process. Um, you had mentioned the game plan. Yes. So that is a book that's written by Sarah Harnish. She's now the di a diamond with Young Living. Yes, there's your <laughs> game plan. Um, when we were talking before, you had mentioned that you had also read and also listened to the game plan. So um, I think that's really neat. Tell me a little bit about how you kind of fit using the game plan into your busy life, mom of three. Yeah. <laughs> so I do traveling with, with my work too. So it takes me um, about a half an hour each direction plus with traffic. And mm -hmm. I found that the game plan is in an audio version. And so for me, fitting in a half an hour of listening to it or being able to figure out exactly what chapter I wanted to listen to a little bit more over and over, especially the one-on-one -on -one script or talking about um, the toxins, getting the toxins out of our home. So once I found that, that was like magical for me because then I could listen to little nuggets of the game plan book without thinking, I'm never gonna get that done. My, my kids are running around, I'm exercising, I can listen to it, I'm driving, I can listen to it, I'm cleaning my house, I'm folding my laundry, you know, all the things that have to get done anyway that you can't really read a book, multitask, and do, but she is the one that is the audio voice for her own audio book, which is amazing too, because you can get the inflection, and you know, it's her story, so that's been really great, and I don't know if everybody knows that you can get that on audio, but it's really been amazing for me to be able to listen to it over and over and over. And every time you do that, you get a little bit more from, yes. from it, which yes. is the same for reading because your mind starts going. <laughs> yeah. But that's been really great. And in her appendix of that, I was just saying to Megan, there is a 101 script and it's the same for the audio. Um, and it just goes over the oils and it goes over a 30 second script and it goes over essential rewards. And so you can just listen over and over again to things that you might not feel like you have strengths in or understand, and then be able to ask questions in groups if you don't 
don't know it, but. Sure. How have you applied game plan into sharing with others? So this Sarah Harnish is, she's just very, I don't, I don't know how to say it, very giving, I guess you could say, because on her site, she has free downloads of um, her Essential Oil 101 lecture and of her Toxin Free Home lecture. So I've been taking those links and sharing them with people because she is just so much better at articulating this than, than I am. I feel like that's where God has given her such a gift that I pray that, that maybe I will get better at. But sharing that with other people has allowed me to take pressure off myself because this is not where my strength is. Being able to, to um, talk in front of people, it makes me very nervous. Uh, so, but that's been helpful. And then people come back and they ask me questions as to where they can go from here. So that's been, it's been great and easy. It's made it a lot easier for me to be able to share with people because mm-hmm. then it's like the pressure is off me to do it. It sure. allows her to be able to do it because she does such a great job anyway. Yeah. It's a great way to use an expert and yeah. to really just kind of almost partner with an expert. And in she it. does it so naturally because that's like her background is mm-hmm. in radio broadcasting Mm -hmm. so she's just so natural at speaking and it's it's been really good yeah I completely agree um what have been some of your biggest takeaways with what you've experienced using the game plan reading the game plan and just how it's kind of translated to other people too um I think it's just naturally sharing trying to meet people where their needs are because you'll Mm -hmm. have some people that they have children and they, you know, they're, like I said, they're worried about the dangers of the chemicals in their homes, like the cleaning supplies they're using and their children crawling around on the floor and then putting their little hands in their mouth. Where people having pets at home and they don't want to have any dangerous chemicals around their pets. So helping them to take away the smells of their pets or maybe the smells of their children or the sure. people in their home with their stinky shoes and being able to just meet people where their need is um, has been really helpful. Like she speaks on that. She speaks, she spoke specifically on her brother, I think, buying a new home and having to take smoke out of the basement and right. just meeting him where he was. Whereas before, she kept talking to him about it and wasn't meeting him where his need was. So that was huge for me because then I, I stopped thinking three steps ahead as to what I was going to say in my mm-hmm. talk about oils and really looking at them and saying, you have, you have needs that maybe oils can meet and I'm hoping that I have a chance to be able to discuss that with them if you get a chance to, because everybody could use these oils. They're, they're magical little bottles that Mm -hmm. take away so many chemicals in our life and things in our life that we don't need, but people just don't know about them or maybe they're scared or like me, I think, remember my story, I I had purchased a lavender oil from, um, I think it was Wegmans or Whole Foods and it had given me headaches. And when I first started using that, I thought, I'm not so sure about these essential oils because they're not really relaxing me. They're giving me this terrible headache. And it wasn't until I tried Young Living's lavender that I realized that in those bottles that I had purchased from the store, they were probably laced with other chemicals, hexane or other chemicals that in the distilling process they had used to take out as much of the oil as they could. And it's now in that bottle and that's what I was smelling and that's what was giving me the headaches, not the oil. It wasn't the lavender. It was the other yuck that they put in there to try to save money and make more money from that bottle. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's really important to just kind of have that personal story, but then also look for other people's stories, which I think is something that it seems like you've really been able to do um, and focus on. What do you think is kind of the first step somebody should take if they are interested in Um, sharing Young Living with others and beginning a business? I really enjoyed listening to the game plan, the audio game plan. I mean, everybody's busy. You Mm -hmm. know, it doesn't matter what stage of your life you're in. You're in a busy stage. You have other things that are pulling at your attention. But for the most part, lots of people are traveling, right? You can be driving in a car. You can be on a bus. You can even be walking somewhere. And during that time, you can just put it on your phone put in your earbuds and listen to it. And you can take away a little, do a chapter a day or do a little segment of it a day. And what's really nice is that Sarah has a Facebook group that will go over all these chapters with you too in more depth. Um, so that would be where I would start. If you were thinking about the business, there's also groups on Facebook that mm-hmm. our family does um, 
with Kirsten, with you, with Lisa, mm -hmm. um, or other groups that are part of our, our line, um, those are really helpful too. But for me, it was trying to find out first what it meant. What does it mean if I want to make this a business? And that for me meant listening to the book and sure. reading the book, reading it over if I needed to. So I had both as a resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, did you know that you've been the highest enroller in the past six months on my team? No. <laughs> yeah. So I am not a numbers person, but I looked back over the numbers and it was one of those moments where I'm like, that's so cool because I really feel like you've had kind of a natural evolution into that. You know, it's just kind of like evolved and been organic. And I just think that that's really awesome. And I think it just goes to show how many lives you're changing. And I think uh, that is glory very to God. Cool. Yeah. That. And I feel like God has opened that door and I don't take credit for that yeah. at all. And well, I, really I think it's cool that, that you're about how um, I feel like God is moving in me and using that as a way to help other people. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. And I think that that's neat to just see how many families' lives can change that way. So I think that's awesome. I'm really um, excited to be working with you on that and partnering with you. And I really thank you very much for taking the time to share a little bit. Any other parting thoughts that you wanted to share? Um, I get, I think it would just be, we're all as moms, like many of us are moms. Um, we're really, we can be hard on ourselves. And I think like this family that we have here is so nurturing and encouraging that whatever path you're on, if you want to use the business or you want, you want to just use them yourself, it's your path sure. and you don't compare yourself to other people because that's where you're going to start to get discouraged. And other, we're all here to help each other. Right. So that's what I want to encourage everybody that if you have questions or you need help, like we're all here to help each other. And the way that I do things might not be the way that you do things or Sarah Harnish does things might be not be the way you do things. I don't do things that way. I don't have large groups because I get petrified of talking <laughs> in front of people, but I can talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody and explain what, what the oils have meant to me. So, and trying to find how the oils can help you or help somebody else. So just, you need to find what works for you. Right. And that's what I think would be the, the thing that I had to find myself because otherwise you can start getting discouraged and that's not a place that you want to be. That's not a, Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's really great. Um, and I think that your positivity has really helped to kind of continue to help you to be able to find that spot yeah. too. Um, and I think it's really cool. One of the things I wanted to just kind of part with too is just how Young Living's business model really um, fosters that attitude of it's yeah. not about comparing. It's really yeah. about encouraging and working together. And I do think that's really an important concept that we yeah. all have a different journey. We all have a different path and timeline for that path. Um, but really, it's just about changing lives and right. being able to build our network so that we can change more lives. And right, and find a, the part of Young Living that makes you excited. Yeah. And makes you energetic and makes you just want to get up and tell everybody else as to what you could do. Like this time of year I think is so fun because you can make things to share with other people like bath bombs and sugar scrubs and lotion bars and all this fun stuff. And that's been really fun, I think, for a lot of people to get out there that they might not have known they had. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's going to be neat to be able to see some of those um, yeah. new people coming in that way too. Yeah. So, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. I'm glad we can share this with others too. So thank you. thanks everyone for listening too. All right. Thanks. Take care.